So we are on question number 11 of code Q6. A long solenoid of radius 1 mm has 100 turns per mm. If 1 ampere current flows in the solenoid, the magnetic flux strength at the center of the solenoid is and four options are given. Now basically long solenoid that means infinite solenoid. So we have to find the field at the center of the long solenoid. So it will be mu naught ni. You see. Now this value of mu naught is 4 pi into 10 to the power minus 7 and n is number of turns per unit length that is 100 per mm. So we will write 100 and per mm it is given so of course we have to convert that into meters so that is 10 to the power minus 3 meter and current is 1. So if we just solve this it will be 4 pi into 10 to the power minus 2 and uh, this will be 12.56 into 10 to the power minus 2 tesla. So option 2 is correct. So this question is basically from the uh, magnetic field or you can say Biot-Sivert's law from magnetism. Let us just move ahead to the next question that is question number 12 you see lots of questions are coming every year from AC in NEET and here we go once again and a bit uh, easy question over here uh, the peak voltage of an AC source is equal to and we have to connect this with the RMS value right. So uh, we know that VRMS is V0 that is peak voltage divided by root 2 that is quite common. Uh, now, over here, V0 is equal to root 2 times VRMS. Now, this V0 is basically a peak voltage. So, it is root 2 times the RMS value of AC source and option 3. Very easy question. Let us just move to the next question that is 13. This question is basically from the work power energy and we have to apply formula for power, for calculating power. An electric lift with a maximum load of 2000 kg that is lift plus passengers is moving up with a constant speed of 1.5 meter per second. The frictional force opposing the force is 3000 Newton. The minimum power delivered by the motor to the lift in watts is and they are asking us to take G as 10 meter per second square. So over here if you just draw the free body diagram for the lift we will say there will be a downward force of 20,000 Newton. So why we are doing this? Like why 20,000? Of course the mass is 2000 and we will multiply by G that is 10 so it will be 20,000. 20, and at the same time lift is moving up with constant velocity that is 1.5 meter per second. Constant velocity you see so it is it's, uh, lift is moving up so there will be a downward force which will be the frictional force and they have given the value of friction that is 3000 Newton already. So you see upward there will be a force that is F which will be applied by the lift and you see the lift is moving up with constant velocity so the F net will be 0 and the force applied by the lift F will be 20,000 plus 3000. So F is coming down as 23000 Newton. Now power if we write so we can just directly multiply force with velocity over here. The force net force is moving up and the velocity is up as well. You can write Fv cos theta as well cos 0 degree no issues. So over here F is 23000 and velocity is 1.5. So it will be 3, 4, 5, double, 0 watts. This is the power we are getting. So, 3, 4, 5, double, 0 is option 3 over here. Right? Let us just move forward. Last question was a bit calculative one. Over here, 14th. This question is from the wave optics YDSE. In a Young's double slit experiment, a student observes 8 fringes in a certain segment of screen where a monochromatic light of 600 nanometer wavelength is used. If the wavelength of the light is changed to 400 nanometer, then the number of fringes he would observe in the same region of the screen is. Now, we can say that the length of screen, length of screen, in first case, 
there are eight fringes. So, eight into beta one will be there, right? And at the same time, you see in the second case, it will be, let us call it n times beta 2. Of course, if you are changing the wavelength, fringe width will change. So, over here, but the length of the segment would not be changing. So, 8 beta 1 is equal to n times beta 2. Now, 8 into I will write lambda 1 capital D by small d is equals to n times lambda 2 capital D by small d. So, this small d, small d, I will cancel out. Uh, now, over here, 8 into 600 nanometer is equals to n into lambda 2 is 400. If you calculate, the n will come down as 12. So, 12 fringes will be obtained. That is option number 4. Let us just move ahead on the next question. Question number 15. Again, you see, Lots of questions are coming from the topic current electricity. Once more, a copper wire of length 10 meter and radius 10 to the power minus 2 divided by under root pi has electrical resistance of 10 ohm. The current electricity in the wire for an electric field strength of 10 volt per meter is, and options are given. So, we basically we have to find the current density. Now, you see, this question may include uh, you know some calculations as well. So, let us just do it. Over here we have to find the current density, but electric field we know. So, we can connect this with the vector form of Ohm's law. Uh, you see normally we write V is equal to IR, simple Ohm's law. Instead of V, I can write electric field. Instead of I, I can write J and instead of R, I can write rho. So, this will become our vector form of Ohm's law. Now, E is 10. 10 volt per meter, J we need to find and rho also we need to find, but for rho they have given us certain values. Now, the resistance is basically equal to rho L by A. Resistance is 10, right, over here and at the same time rho we have to find length is 10 meter and area is pi into 10 to the power minus 2 by under root pi whole square. So, if you calculate the value of rho from here, it will come down as 10 to the power minus 4. You see, 10, 10 will cancel out, pi square pi will go, so 10 to the power minus 4 will come. So, I will write over here 10 is equals to j into 10 to the power minus 4. So, this implies j is coming down as 10 to the power 5, right? And of course, ampere per meter square, that is a unit of j. So, we have fourth option correct, right, bit calculative one. Let us just move ahead on the next question. That is question number 16, the dimensions of m l t to the power minus 2 a to the power minus 2 belongs to. Now, they have given us with four options, of course, we have to eliminate, but to connect with the formula, there can be, a, you know, lots of ways to solve the problems, right. Uh, here, we will be concentrating on this magnetic permeability part. To find the SI unit of the magnetic permeability, we can use numerous ways. Uh, we can just connect it with the energy part as well. Energy density is half B square by mu naught. Or over here, we can also do this. The force between the two wires, two infinite wires, force per unit length. We have formula FL. This is much easier. FL is equals to mu naught I1 i2 divided by 2 pi d. Now, this force is basically force per unit length. So, this is length and this is mu naught i1 i2 divided by 2 pi d. Now, of course, we are finding dimension. So, we can cancel this d and this l because both will represent in the uh, both will be represented in meters. So, over here, if we say this mu naught is basically coming down as f. For f, I will write m l t to the power minus 2 and for i 1 i 2, I will write a into a. So, this will come down as m l t to the power minus 2 a to the power minus 2. This is our same thing. So, magnetic permeability will be the right option mu naught, right. Let us just move to the next question that is 17. See, this question is basically from waves and specifically from, uh, you know, speed 
of a wave in a string. So we know the formula that if you want to find uh, the speed of wave in a string, so that is under root t by mu, right? Now over here, the question is, if the initial tension on a stretched spring is doubled, then the ratio of the initial and final speed of the transverse wave along the string is. Now we have to find the ratio. So we know mu will be same since the wire is same. So V will be directly proportional to under root T. So I will be writing V1 by V2. is equals to under root t1 by t2. Now, initially tension was t and after that it was doubled. So, that will be 1 by root 2. So, the ratio will come down as 1 is to root 2, right? So, this is option number 3, right? Easy one. Let us just move to the next question. This is question number 18. Uh, this question is basically from the semiconductors part, diode thing and half wave rectifier. Now, uh, this is again a bit fact wise or we can just solve it over here as well. In a half wave rectification, if the input frequency is 60 hertz, then the output frequency would be, again that will be 60 hertz only. Because in half wave rectifier, the input frequency, you see, uh, the input wave is like this. Or we can just extend this, input one, this is input. But the output is only half wave is rectified. So it goes like this and then again it will be vacant part and then again. So you see after this much time it is again repeating. So over here as well the same time was there. So since time period is not changing so frequency also will not be changing. So it will be 60 hertz and the option third will be correct for this question. Next that is question number 19. A very easy question from the kinematics part from NEAT. The displacement time graph of two moving particles make angles of 30 degree and 45 degree with the x axis as shown in the figure. The ratio of their respective velocity is, you see, they have given us the graph uh, displacement versus time. So, of course, the slope of displacement versus time will give the velocity. So, uh, for V1, if I write the first velocity, that will be 10. 30 degree, right? So, it will be 1 by root 3 and the second velocity V2 is basically 10 45 degree, that will be 1. So, if I take the ratio, so that will be 1 by root 3. So, we are getting this option, yes, option number 4 is correct, that is 1 is to root 3, uh, this will be the answer. Of course, first one is 30 degree, that is why we have taken it first. Next question, 20. A square loop, this question is basically from the uh, EMI part, right, where we have to calculate the flux. A square loop of side 1 meter and resistance 1 ohm is placed in a magnetic field of 0 0.5 tesla. If the plane of the loop is perpendicular to the direction of magnetic field, the magnetic flux through the loop is and we are given with certain options. Now, we have to, when we have to find the flux, we say B A cos theta, right. Of course, B is constant, so we can just directly apply this. Magnetic field is constant. So, how much is the magnetic field? That is 0 0.5. And area uh, for the square is 1 square. And here, this will be cos 0 degree. This is basically over here, the plane of loop is perpendicular to the direction of magnetic field. So, area vector and the magnetic field will be in the same direction, that is cos 0 degree. So, if we solve this, this will be 0 0.5 tesla. This will be the flux. And we can see that uh, not Tesla, Weber, right? Flux will be Weber. So, option 2 is correct for this part. 